So now we can hustle our way back to the mansion. Once you're sure you've gotten everything you need out of the residence, which I think... Oh wait, no. Hang on. I missed a bathroom. I ain't going to bathroom there. What terrible thing could happen in the bathroom? We're like four for four on bad shit happening in bathrooms. Let's see if we can make it five for five. We're bad in a thousand. We've got this horrible Thai food a brewing inside of our stomachs. Little plug there. What's this? There's something in the bathtub. I don't know why I needed to change the camera angle for that, but whatever. Roots some kind of giant plant are sticking out of the wall. Well, that's gross. Hey! Nothing terrible happened. We caught an item and nobody tried to attack us. Great job. Now that is everything we need from the residence. Like I said, that room is going to be red forever because of the jars in there. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and we will make our way back to Man Sion. Wesker! Jill, so you're safe. That's what I was going to say. I apologize. It was all I could do to protect myself against those strange creatures. I understand. Anyway, it's good that you're safe. Did you notice? Barry, he sounded a little flaky. Now that you mention it, yeah. I'll keep a close eye. Maybe it's quite natural under these circumstances. It's not really our standard operation. Jill, our first priority is to get out of here. I agree. There are still rooms in that mansion we can't get into because they're locked up. I've been looking for ways to... Okay, if there's anything, I'll go back to the other mansion. I'm counting on you. This is Brad. Come in, Star's Alpha Team. Come in. This is Jill. I hear you, Brad. Over. Stars Alpha Team. Bravo Team. Doesn't matter. Respond. I repeat, this is Brad. Brad? Brad! This is Brad. If you can't answer me, somehow give me a sign. Jill to Brad. Can you hear me? Brad! Brad! Shit. It's broken. Brad, once again, trying to communicate with a higher power. Use this to protect you yourself from that bulletproof thing in chains. I went ahead and fixed that piece of crap door too. Very. Sorry. I went ahead and fixed that piece of crap door too. Alright, leave that where it is. You might be tempted to touch it, but don't. Now there's a funny story about when young Andrew played this game. See, I played this back when it came out on the GameCube. And there was, uh, there was a section of this game uh, that I couldn't remember anything past when I got old. Um, and uh, it actually happens to be this section right here. This, this specific moment. I couldn't remember anything when I was researching this game uh, after this moment. Because I, I remember I played up to this exact point in time. And then I couldn't remember anything afterwards. 
It's driving me absolutely bonkers. Um, and then this cutscene that's about to happen occurred, and I remembered immediately exactly why young Andrew got rid of this fucking game. Because I saw this cutscene, saw what happened immediately after it, uh, ripped this thing out of my GameCube, slapped it back into the box, and biked it right the hell back to Blockbuster. Yeah, there's hunters now. Jesus fucking Christ, run the hell away. So, let's talk about hunters for realsies this time. Jesus! Fuck, fuck, fuck. God. Damn it. First off, I hit them. Uh, because they are... Whew, they are something else. Um, Alright, so we talked about Hunters a little bit in uh, Resident Evil Zero. But now that... Now that you're playing as one character, um, Hunters are a completely different dynamic. Uh, we encountered this a little bit during the Rebecca phase of the game. Uh, in RE0, but it wasn't quite the same, because Rebecca was uh, a little later in the game before she had to fight hunters on their own. So hunters uh, have three things going for them that you don't have. Uh, first off, they can move three-dimensionally with no, no hindrance. What this means is that while you're kind of hamstrung by the fact that you have to utilize tank controls um, they can do that crazy shadow dodge thing they can do like jumps from one floor to another oh good a crimson head just what I want uh, they have way 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 more mobility than you do secondly uh, they can appear anywhere now uh, they've replaced a lot of the zombies and other creatures from the mansion. Oh good, that guy changed. Uh, and they're just as annoying as Crimson Heads, except worse, because they can uh, attack you and stun lock you like it's nobody's business. Which will quickly lead to your death. Uh, tertiarily, they have uh, two different types of attacks. Uh, firstly, they have their regular swipes. Uh, and then secondarily, they have their leaping attack. Now, if you're playing the original game on the PlayStation, um, you have no recourse against these leaping attacks. They are completely invincible from frame one to the final frame uh, when they come in for that, that swipe, um, which is super bad because it does a ton of damage um, and it actually has a it has a random chance to one hit kill you, which is really bad. Um, basically, the way it works is the hunter when it rolls when it rolls uh, when it jumps to attack you uh, and it makes contact. The game rolls on a table. And the table is basically how likely you are to be decapitated by the hunter. Um, the base modifier for that table is determinant upon how much health you have at the time that the hunter attacks. So that's where the kind of urban legend of you know, you have to be at a certain health threshold to be killed by a hunter instantly comes from. Because you don't really have to be. Um, the game utilizes your current health at time of hit uh, and the difficulty uh, that the game is currently set on to calculate whether or not you're going to be insta-killed. So on higher difficulties, you're more likely to be decapitated um, and the more damage you've taken, uh, the more likely you are to be decapitated. 
So you could, in theory, be on uh, a really high difficulty level, like Nightmare or Invisible Enemy or whatever, um, and get instigibbed from from 100% health. Um, the health is more of a factor than the difficulty, but it does it does tie into that. Uh, at the end of the day. Um, you basically just don't want to be near them. Uh, they can't attack you if you leave a room, so just get away from them. If you see them jumping at you and you're playing the HD remake, uh, remake uh, or the, the original GameCube version of the remake, you can shoot them out of the air. And in fact, on uh, Steam, you get an achievement for that. All that being said, get to either one of the safe rooms. Um, it doesn't matter which one. And load yourself out with the shotgun, shotgun ammo, the grenade launcher with acid rounds, uh, some herbs, and the helmet key. When Barry says uh, in the original game, uh, this weapon is very powerful, especially against living things, what he means is the acid rounds are more useful um, against enemies that are not zombies. So the uh, hunters and I think Plant 42 will take more damage statically than the zombie dogs or regular zombies. So uh, because the final boss is in fact a zombie, you want to utilize the acid rounds during this section of the game. The helmet key is very important because it has four very critical doors associated with it. Uh, we're going to take these one floor at a time, so off we go. The hunters do have a couple of weaknesses. Uh, if you dodge, um, their swipes are usually with their right hand. So if you dodge their, to their left, you're more than likely to... I went the wrong way, sorry you're more than likely to dodge their attack. Um, they also, uh, their AI is also kind of buggy, so they'll try to get into an optimal distance to slash you. And if that distance isn't just right, they'll sort of freak out and jump away from you, which gives you well, it gives you breathing room, uh, for one, uh, and for two skis, it gives you enough time to get around them and through the nearest door. Also, you can abuse the fact that enemies reset their positions whenever you leave. If you're trying to go through a room and you get trapped by a hunter, just turn around and leave. And then come back into the room, the hunter's position will be reset and you can try again. Door number one. You want to take this from the bottom floor up because the last or the third floor uh, helmet key door leads to a boss fight. There's something handwritten, it's not dated. Nothing's changed. I never thought this room I designed as an experiment would pay off like this. I can hide here safely for a while because nobody knows about the secret behind this painting, not even Sir Spencer. Painting him a mansion in the back of the, in the, back of the art. Uh, this puzzle can be kind of annoying if it's the one that I'm thinking of. Big game for me? Yes. I think this is the only door right here. Yes, it is. Okay. This puzzle can be annoying because it requires uh, good timing, which is. Oh dear. Yeah, why don't you eat shit and die? Will you take the dagger? Yes. Will you take the this box? Yes. It's a fun little mini game. That we can't do yet because we need the red jewel. So we'll come back to that. That's everything here. Is it? 
Yeah, because that's the costume room. That's everything in here. Now we can skedaddle. Now we can go to the second floor!